Hey, good afternoon, guys. Um, we left off yesterday. Omri and Patrick had gotten in trouble and were being sent to the principal's office. So uh, I'm actually curious. I don't remember exactly how that goes down. So I'm looking forward to uh, uh, finding out. So their teacher, Mr. Uh, their teacher had uh, Miss Hilton, told them to go to Mr. Johnson's office. They got up silently and walked through the tables. While all the girls giggled and the boys smirked or looked sorry for them, according to whether they liked them or not. Omri glanced at Patrick under his eyebrows. They were in for it now. Under the, or outside the headmaster's office, they stopped. You knock, whispered Omri. No, you, retorted Patrick. They dithered about for a few minutes, but it was useless to put it off. So in the end, they both knocked together. Yes, came a rather irritable voice from inside. They edged around the door. Mr. Johnson was seated at a large desk working on some papers. He looked up or he looked up at once. Well, you two, what was it this time? Fighting in the playground or talking in class? Talking, they said, said Patrick, and I was late. Why? I just was. Oh, don't waste my time, snapped Mr. Johnson. There must have been a reason. I was in the music room and I forgot the time, Patrick repeated. I don't remember you being especially musical. What were you doing in the music room? Playing. Which instrument? Asked Mr. Johnson with a touch of sarcasm. Just playing. With what? He asked, raising his voice. With, uh, uh, with, he glanced at Omri and Omri threw him a warning grimace. What are you pulling faces about, Omri? You look as if someone's just stuck you into a, uh, stuck a knife into you. Omri started to giggle and that set Patrick off. Somebody just did, sputtered Patrick. Mr. Johnson was, no, was in no such jolly mood, however. He was scowling horribly. What are you talking about, you silly boy? Stop that idiotic nonsense. Patrick's giggles were getting worse. If they hadn't been where they were, Omri thought, Patrick would have folded up completely. You know, when you start laughing, you just can't stop even if you're in trouble. Someone did stick a knife into him, hiccuped Patrick, a very small one. His voice went off into sort of a whinny. Omri had stopped giggling and was staring in awful anticipation at Patrick. When Patrick got into this state, he was apt to do anything and say anything like someone who's drunk. Omri took hold of his arm and gave it a sharp shake. Shut up, he hissed. Mr. Johnson got up slowly and came around his desk. Both boys fell back a step, but Patrick didn't stop giggling. On the contrary, it got worse. He seemed to be getting completely or he seemed to be getting completely helpless. Mr. Johnson loomed over him and took him by the shoulder. Listen here, my lad, he said in fearsome tones. I want you to pull yourself together this moment and tell me what you meant. If there is any child in this school who uh, far forgets himself as to stick knives into people or even pretend to, I want to know about it. Now, who was it? Little Bear, Patrick squeaked out. Tears were running down his cheeks. Omri gasped, don't. Who, asked Mr. Johnson, puzzled. Patrick didn't answer. He couldn't. He was now speechless with nervous, almost hysterical laughter. Mr. Johnson gave him a shake of his own that rocked him back and forth on his feet like those of weighted dolls that won't fall down. Then abruptly, he let go of him and strode back to his desk. You seem to be quite beyond yourself, he said sharply. I think the only thing I can do is telephone your father. Patrick stopped laughing instantly. Oh, that's better, said Mr. Johnson. Now, who did you say stabbed Omri? Patrick stood rigid like a soldier at attention. He didn't look at Omri. He just stared straight at Mr. Johnson. I want the truth, Patrick, and I want it now. Little Bear, said Patrick, very clearly and much louder than necessary. Little who? Bear. Mr. Johnson looked blank, as well he might. Is that somebody's nickname, or is this not your idea of a joke? Patrick gave his head one stiff shake. Omri was staring at him, as if paralyzed. Was he going to tell? He knew Patrick was afraid of his father. Patrick, I ask you once more, who is this little bear? Patrick opened his mouth. Omri clenched his teeth and he was helpless. Patrick said, he's an Indian. A what? asked Mr. Johnson. His voice was very quiet. Now, 
He didn't sound annoyed anymore. An Indian! Mr. Johnson looked at him steadily for some seconds, his chin resting on his hand. You are too old to tell those sort of lies, he said quietly. It's not a lie, Patrick shouted suddenly, making both Omri and Mr. Johnson jump. It's not a lie. He's a real live American Indian. To Omri's utter horror, he saw that Patrick was beginning to cry. Mr. Johnson saw it too. He was not an unkind man. No headmaster is much good if you can't scare the wits out of children when necessary, but Mr. Johnson didn't enjoy making them cry. I understand. Now then, Patrick, none of that, he said gruffly, but Patrick misunderstood, and he thought he was still saying that he didn't believe him. He now said the words Omri had been dreading the most. It's true, and I can prove it. And his hand went into his pocket. Omri did the only thing possible. He jumped up, and he knocked him over, and he sat on his chest and pinned his hands to the ground. You dare, you dare, you dare, he ground out between clenched teeth before Mr. Johnson dragged him off. Get out of the room, he roared. There's a picture of Mr. Johnson, and there is Omri going after Patrick before he pulls his uh, hand out of his pocket with the little men. I won't, Omri choked out. He'd been crying him, or he'd be crying himself in a minute. He felt so desperate. Out! Omri felt his collar seized. He was like, he was almost hiked off his feet. The next thing he knew, he was outside the door and hearing the key turning. Without stopping to think, Omri hurled himself against the door, kicking and banging his fists. Don't show him, Patrick, don't show him. Patrick, don't, I'll kill you if you show him. He screamed at the top of his lungs. Probably not the best choice of words, huh? That's the kind of stuff that gets us upset at school. Footsteps came running. Through his tears and sort of a red haze, Omri saw Mrs. Hunt, the headmaster's elderly secretary, bearing down on him. He got in a couple more good kicks and shouts before she got a hold of him with both arms around his waist, carried him, shrieking and struggling bodily into her own little office. The minute she put him down, he tried to bolt, but she hung on. Omri, Omri, stop it. Calm down. Whatever's come over you, you naughty boy. Please don't let him. Go in and stop him, Omri cried. Who? What? Before Omri could explain, he heard the sound of footsteps from the next room. Suddenly, Mr. Johnson appeared, holding Patrick by the elbow. The headmaster's face was dead white and his mouth partly open. Patrick's head, w head was hung down and his shoulders were heaving with sobs. One look at them told Omri the worst. Patrick had shown him. That's the end of chapter 12. So I'll uh, pick up with chapter 13 tomorrow. Um, and uh, that's, gosh, I can't even imagine like being at school and being in trouble for something, just being silly. And then like the whole thing comes apart, like you're, you're going to be in so much trouble, you know that, uh, well, not just trouble, but then, you know, trying to get them taken away. I can just imagine like that sick, nervous feeling you would get. I'm sure you guys know, well, some of you guys are probably pretty good kids, you've never been in my office, but I know for some people that's a pretty scary feeling. So have a great night, you guys.